Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, John Mariani, the, the man who is the gourmet for Celebrating Act Two, our naturally uh, world traveler, food and wine travel expert, a man who's written for New York Magazine, Esquire, Bloomberg News, Forbes, and many, many others, and also the publisher of the fabulous newsletter, The Virtual Gourmet, available at johnmariani.com, by the way. Yes, yes. John Mariani, here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Morning, gentlemen. <laughs> Hi, John. Yeah, you know, I, I go to uh, the johnmariani.com to read your Virtual Gourmet newsletter all the time, sometimes just to enjoy the lush photos that you uh, populate it with, uh, whether it's uh, with uh, uh, the novel, it really doesn't matter. I, just johnmarion.com, go there. But one time uh, recently, it seems that you have this incredible uh, photograph with meatballs on it. And uh, you're an expert in all things food uh, and meatballs, why meatballs? meatballs. Well, fortunately, meatballs are making a big comeback after years of being out of favor. Because, you know, most food is based on social class. So there were things that the upper classes wouldn't eat that the lower classes had to eat. And there are things that the uh, upper classes could eat because the lower classes were not able to eat it. Well, meatballs are one of those things which is associated with old line so-called red sauce Italian restaurants going back to the turn of the last century. And it was a good deal for, you know, if you look at old movies, everybody orders a spaghetti and meatballs, spaghetti and meatballs and marinara sauce. And it was always cheap. It was always abundant. It didn't cost much. Right. And it was for the Italians, the Italian Americans who came here, it was quite a big deal because for most of the poor Southerners, Neapolitans and others who came here at the turn of the last century, uh, meat was a maybe a once a week deal. And then um, to grind up meat uh, with uh, some uh, day old bread, you could extend it at least. So you made them into these meatballs and had them with uh, pasta for maybe for Sunday dinner with what came to be called in, in America Sunday sauce, which was a meat gravy. Okay. So it became associated with low class Italians and low class Italian American restaurants. So that when Italian food started to get sophisticated, supposedly, <clears throat> back in the 1970s and 80s, um, there were two accusations lodged against it. One was that that's old fashioned, you know, heavy and greasy and oily and associated with red tablecloths and Chianti bottles with candles dripping in and so <laughs> forth. Uh, and plus, the second thing is, of course, everybody knows they're not really Italian. They're Italian American. Well, that was a you know, that was a blow. Well, to dismiss both um, accusations, first of all, they do not have to be heavy. Uh, Well-made meatball is mostly meat and not stuffing. If you get too much stuffing, then you're getting a bad meatball. The second of all, they did tend to get very large. Um, because you would order a big plate of it and share it with the table, okay? So you'd have several of them. The accusation that they are not Italian is nonsensical. Over in Italy, they call them polpette, okay? Polpette, P-O-L-P-E-T-T-E. -E. And they always have been, and they've always been there. Now, they tend to be smaller, and they tend to be incorporated into um, dishes, pasta dishes, and other things, but they're very lovable. And my mother, when she was making lasagna, um, she would make uh, little meatballs the, si the size of marbles. And she always made 10% more than we're gonna go into the lasagna because she'd saute them and brown them. And then with toothpicks, my brother and I would just eat 15 or 20 of them before <laughs> dinner. Um, they were, but that's more, more like what they were like back in the old country i.e. Italy. However, let us not forget that almost the rest of the whole world, <clears throat> in fact, has um, has their own versions of meatballs. Um, for instance, in uh, India, they have uh, kofta dishes. Kofta 
<coughs> is a uh, it's an Indian style meatball. Excuse, excuse my cough. <coughs> and in um, Persia and throughout the Middle East, they put them on skewers where they're called kebabs. And they have them in Scandinavia where they have Swedish meatballs, which are very, very much Scandinavian American thing became very, very popular here. So there's almost nowhere in the world where you don't find meatballs. They have them certainly in China, like bob and soups and everything. So that they've come back, I think, for two reasons. Number one, because people have a real craving for <clears throat> well-made Italian, <clears throat> Southern Italian food and Italian American food. Wish my wife and I wrote a whole book about called Italian American Cookbook. Uh, my wife Galina, and in that we say, um, if you are put off by the heavy gloppiness of what you think is Italian American food, you don't make it right, and you're not using the best ingredients. And if you don't use the best ingredients, it's going to be old style Italian American food, which should put Heinz ketchup on it uh, for and call it tomato sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember in, um, in Goodfellas when uh, he is uh, he's in the witness prote protection program. They send him out to like Arizona or something. Said, the people out here, they don't know Italian food at all. They put ketchup on it and say it's tomato sauce, and, and uh, which is still true to this day in, in certain places. Um, one of my favorite ads ever <clears throat> was for Alka Seltzer. They did a series of them. Oh. I don't know how a guy's mm -hmm. sitting there and he says, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Yeah. So you ate it, Al. And she gives him an Alka Seltzer. But the, the sweetest one is it's a commercial within a commercial. They are apparently making a commercial for uh, meatballs or, or, or a, a, a tomato sauce. And then this guy who looks at him with his big Italian yeah. wife standing over him like this. And he takes a piece and he goes, Ah, oh, that's a spicy meatball. And then I said, Jack, do it again. Take two. Holy moly. No, it's not holy. Take three. And it goes on like this. <laughs> and, and each time he has to eat a meatball. Right. So it's goes, spicy meatball. A spicy, spicy meatball. <laughs> Take 34. <laughs> so he finally gets it right. He says, Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. And behind him, uh, something falls off the table and ruins the take. Yeah. <laughs> of course, the Alka Seltzer comes onto yeah. the table at that point. That was <laughs> so a famous it's, commercial. It's, it's, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. But um, again, it's come back. The second reason it's come back is because there really is a whole new appreciation for Italian American food specifically, and um, and dim sum. You know, dim sum is basically a meatball. It just happens to be wrapped in Chinese uh, noodle wrapper. But that's made of pork, or that's made of uh, of beef, or or whatever. So it spans the world. Um, I remember being in Nepal once, and one of the things that they were proudest of was they brought it these things called manati or something. I don't know, mari. This is from the top of Mount Everest. We got this dish, and it came. And what it was was meatballs in a gravy. And they, <laughs> uh, so well, the wonderful thing about meatballs, John, is that they've been around. High or low, they've been a, a staple in family cooking. Oh, you know? and you so, certainly didn't have to be Italian to enjoy them. Um, it's it's ironic to mention that Chef Boyardee, who you, one can have a low opinion of the taste of what comes out of those cans. It came out of World War II because he was he was um, Chef Boyardee. He was a real chef, Italian chef, and he got the contract in the U.S. Army to put Italian food into cans for the GIs. And they learned to love it, okay? But you couldn't fit five big meatballs in there, so he put eight or nine small meatballs in there. So um, that was another little footnote to meatball history. Well, I never even knew there really was a Chef Boyardee. So this has been a very informative video. I appreciate it. And it's uh, making me hungry, too. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, go have a meatball sandwich. The ball sandwich. Oh, great. I love meatball sandwiches. Oh, yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.